Uh, now, it is 23 minutes past six. Long queues, closed forecourts and frustrated motorists have been a common sight over the last few days as the rush for fuel caused panic at the pumps. But as we've been hearing, the army could now be helping with petrol deliveries by the end of the week. And the fuel industry says there are now some signs that the situation's improving. Our John Maguire has been out and about to see how things are going. Slowly but surely, the crisis seems to be easing. And after several days, supplies are catching up with demand in many places, but not everywhere. Many drivers in London faced another day of anger and frustration. It's terrible, honestly. I have to get up uh, early in the morning, 4.30, and queue. All rules have gone out the window at the moment, I think. So, people are desperate. Things are ridiculous. They need to sort this out. I mean, we can't get goods to our restaurants, you know. And the driver said to me, if you haven't got the... Uh, there's no fuel, I'm not going to be uh, taking the, uh, the land out. So, we really need to sort this out. Across the UK, many stations have run dry and forecourts remain coned off. The Petrol Retailers Association represents almost three quarters of the UK's filling stations. It said two thirds were empty on Sunday, but that had dropped to just over one third by last night. Michaela Lessels is a key worker from Fife who managed to find fuel after visiting nine sites on her way home from work. My car was basically running on fumes. At that point, I thought I was actually going to have to abandon my car. It was after 11 at night. I thought I was going to have to abandon the car because I had no fuel. Um, it's just been horrific. The lady that I spoke to who served me last night, she was absolutely deflated with the whole situation. Courier David Newton had worried he wouldn't be able to carry on delivering parcels, but a late-night dash around Bath proved successful. Absolute madness. The infrastructure is crazy. And, of course, we've lost so many service stations over the years, and it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And in the end last night, I actually got some diesel at 12.45 in the morning <laughs> to fill up my van so that I could do my deliveries today. Where fuel has got through, queues are disappearing. The effects were obvious to see. The causes more difficult to determine. The government maintained there was no fuel supply shortage, but that didn't stop the panic. Why? It's our defence mechanism really coming into play. I can't control what the government will say. I can't control what the next stage of lockdown might be. But what I can control is putting some petrol into my car. So that immediately gives me a sense of relief. So if I've been going around, paradoxically using up that little bit of petrol I had, but as soon as I fill up again, I think, oh, I've, I've done something, I'm in control again. It gives us that sense of relief. The Ministry of Defence has confirmed the military will help to keep the tanks topped up. For various reasons, many supply chains are currently unable to cope with disruptions, as we've seen in recent days. A bump in the road can put the brakes on for the supply of goods and services that we used to take for granted. John McGuire, BBC News. Lots of Bond chat on the programme this morning. Really looking Loads forward to that. Me. Was it nearly three hours long <laughs> as well, isn't <laughs> it? Is, yes. It, it's almost longer than we've waited for yeah, it. it's a big investment. Uh, to watch it, but yeah, we'll watch. Yeah. Now, a trip to the pub or restaurant could be more expensive this weekend, and it's all because of changes to VAT. Ben... Is it a pub on the River Thames? How lovely, though. Perhaps it's a little bit early, Ben. Only half six. <laughs> <laughs> Never too early, Sally. Good morning to you both. Uh, yeah, welcome to Hammersmith. And look, you're right. Your pint on Saturday night, your chicken roast maybe on Sunday could cost a little bit more from this weekend. And that's because some of the tax changes that were brought in, those tax cuts, Brought in to give business a bit of a boost during the pandemic, well, they start to rise again. It's going to be a phased, a gradual increase. But nonetheless, there are concerns that it could hit one of the industries that's been hardest hit by COVID, as my colleague Katie Austin has been finding out. Kitchens like these have been up and running again for a few months now. But the financial shock of lockdowns means business isn't quite back to normal. This Birmingham restaurant group now only opens at busier times. Uh, Paul Perea, for example, we used to open at lunchtimes during the week and we've stopped. And at Ophine, we used to run for six days and now we just do four days. The manager says government support has been a lifeline, not only furlough, but other measures, including the temporary cuts to VAT. 
We pay VAT or value added tax on a wide range of the goods and services that we buy and the standard rate is 20%. In July last year, the Chancellor cut VAT to 5% for food and drink served in restaurants, cafes and pubs for accommodation and attractions. From October, that rate rises to 12.5% before returning to 20% next April. Firms don't have to pass on the lower rate to customers by lowering prices, and many haven't, saying they've needed to pocket the difference to stay afloat. Now VAT is rising again, Andrew is worried, because other costs are also going up. The price of ingredients has basically doubled. Uh, similarly, uh, staffing, the wages have increased. It's going to make things very difficult to uh, maintain the price structure that we've got already. Um, so prices might have to go up, basically? I think it's inevitable for the industry. Um, there, I can't think of a, a single restaurant that we've spoken to, or even in the country, that is going to be able to stomach the VAT uh, rising. Any spring onions, chilies and ginger for you? A few streets away, there's a Hawaiian food cafe, and the boss there is also feeling the squeeze. Recently, even something like mango, and we buy hundreds of kilograms of mango at a time, 20% increase. There are too many inflationary pressures in the system putting the VAT up at a time when, frankly, we're still not out of COVID. is a little bit premature. I do think they need to delay it, and I think they need to delay it by another six months. This hotel group did drop its prices, which boosted bookings. They're reluctantly having to raise them again, but hope international travellers will be happy to pay. Everybody wants to travel again and OK, it will be less competitive, uh, but I think we will get back on track. The Treasury told us hospitality had had extensive support and it had always been clear the lower rate of VAT was temporary. Andrew says his industry is still fragile and he's concerned with the cost of living rising, customers will have little appetite for price rises. Katie Austin, BBC News. So, what does business make of all of this? Well, Adrian is with us. He's Operations Director at Hippo Inns. Adrian, morning. Thanks for having us. What does this mean for you on a day-to-day -day basis? So, it's currently 5%, it goes to 12 and half, and then soon back to 20. What difference will it make? Yeah, well, good morning. Welcome to uh, the Blue Anchor. Uh, it's the, the increases um, for, for the VAT rise are significant uh, at a stage where all costs seem to be rising with, for the industry. We've been hit quite hard over the past 18 months, and we, although we thank the government for the support we've had, I just feel that we just need a bit more time to really recover uh, and a bit more understanding of all the costs that we're, are impacting our business at the moment going forward. Yeah, so it's sort of too much too soon because, look, business is back, you know, customers are through the door, you're able to open and operate, but it's not business as usual, is it? No, not quite. We're in a very positive situation uh, and Hippo Inn's doing, you know, really well. We've used the, the, any closure to come back strong, but yeah. it just is making it very hard now. Business rates have gone back up, you know, the VAT increase. We've got to be price sensitive. We can't uh, overload that onto our guests all the time. We're having price increases from suppliers. So we've got to be very cautious about looking at our menu design. And I've got a great team around me that look at that and how we can talk, work with our suppliers so we don't impact our guests because we want them to, they've had a tough time as well. So we want them to be able to come in, enjoy the pub as, it, as they should do. Uh, so this is about looking at how you run the business and finding out whether you can make any savings elsewhere rather than directly passing that price increase on to customers. Yes, at the, at the moment as it stands, Hippo Inns are planning to take on the, those extra costs right. and it'll erode our financials. But we want to support our guests uh, and make sure they can come in and still enjoy the great hospitality that we provide mm. uh, in a great environment. I mean, we've talked over the past 18 months about how hospitality has been one of the hardest hit, but you touched on it there. Also got a lot of financial support from the government. So, you know, the government would say this support, this extra help has to end sometime is now not the time? Um, it's exactly right. I mean, the sport has been there and we're grateful for that. But I think the understanding of all the costs that are arising at the moment um, just need to be taken into consideration. Oh. And if some of these, the VAT increase could be stalled a little bit, I appreciate the 12.5 coming in on Friday, yeah. but maybe the increase to 20% could be put back for a bit longer just to help the industry really recover uh, would be fantastic. Good luck. 
busy weekend ahead. <laughs> but uh, nice to see you, Adrian. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, and as Adrian was saying there, look, that extra increase uh, to 20% to what it was before the pandemic, that happens in March. So it is very much a staggered approach, 12.5% from this weekend and then back to that 20% uh, by March of next year. As we said, the government has offered a lot of financial support to the hospitality industry, but the warning really is that it might be too much too soon to start raising that VAT, which puts prices up at a time, as we've been talking about so much, that it seems that prices for everything are going up. Uh, more from here for me a little later. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Ben. Enjoy that coffee. <laughs> Trip to the pub or restaurant could be more expensive this weekend, and it's all because of changes to VAT. Yeah, Ben, is at a pub on the River Thames for us this morning. A bit early, but he has been behaving <laughs> himself. Although he's been barred by the looks of it. Morning, Ben. <laughs> Look, someone's got to do it, haven't they? Uh, good morning. Welcome to uh, the Blue Anchor. We're just on the River Thames here. And you're right, if you're heading out for your pint on Saturday night or maybe a bit of lunch on Sunday, you could find that it's going to cost you a little bit more from this week. And that's because some of the tax uh, cuts that were introduced during the height of the pandemic to give business a bit of a boost, well, they've started to expire. And from the weekend, VAT will rise from 5% to 12.5% before going back up to 20% in March of next year. So a big burden for business and particularly the hospitality industry that's been so badly affected by COVID. So what impact could that have? My colleague Katie Austin has been finding out. Kitchens like these have been up and running again for a few months now. But the financial shock of lockdowns means business isn't quite back to normal. This Birmingham restaurant group now only opens at busier times. Uh, Paul Perea, for example, we used to open at lunchtimes during the week and we've stopped. And at Ophine, we used to run for six days and now we just do four days. The manager says government support has been a lifeline, not only furlough, but other measures, including the temporary cut to VAT. We pay VAT or value added tax on a wide range of the goods and services that we buy and the standard rate is 20%. In July last year, the Chancellor cut VAT to 5% for food and drink served in restaurants, cafes and pubs for accommodation and attractions. From October, that rate rises to 12.5% before returning to 20% next April. Firms don't have to pass on the lower rate to customers by lowering prices, and many haven't, saying they've needed to pocket the difference to stay afloat. Now VAT is rising again, Andrew is worried, because other costs are also going up. The price of ingredients has basically doubled. Uh, similarly, uh, staffing, the wages have increased. It's going to make things very difficult to uh, maintain the price structure that we've got already. Um, so prices might have to go up, basically? I think it's inevitable for the industry. Um, there, I can't think of a, a single restaurant that we've spoken to, or even in the country, that is going to be able to stomach the VAT uh, rising. Any spring onions, chilies and ginger for you? A few streets away, there's a Hawaiian food cafe, and the boss there is also feeling the squeeze. Recently, even something like mango, and we buy hundreds of kilograms of mango at a time, 20% increase. There are too many inflationary pressures in the system, putting the VAT up at a time when, frankly, we're still not out of COVID is a little bit premature. I do think they need to delay it, and I think they need to delay it by another six months. This hotel group did drop its prices, which boosted bookings. They're reluctantly having to raise them again, but hope international travellers will be happy to pay. Everybody wants to travel again and OK, it will be less competitive, uh, but I think we will get back on track. The Treasury told us hospitality had had extensive support and it had always been clear the lower rate of VAT was temporary. Andrew says his industry is still fragile and he's concerned with the cost of living rising, customers will have little appetite for price rises. Katie Austin, BBC News. So what will the impact be with me is Kate Nichols, who's the chief executive of UK Hospitality. Kate, morning. Talk me through the impact. What will we see as a result of this VAT increase this weekend? Well, over 70% of hospitality businesses passed on the VAT cut in full. So customers are going to see an increase in prices as a result of the change in VAT this weekend. And obviously when it comes to, to an end in March, you'll see an even bigger hike in prices there. So you're looking at, the, sort of, if you're passing the VAT cost on, a £12 main course will go up to £13.50, £14 by the time you get to 20% VAT. 
And you might say, this could not come at a worse time. We know that our energy bills are going up, our food bills are going up, and I suppose for business as well, a lot of their bills are going up. So everything is starting to cost a bit more. Absolutely, it's a perfect storm. So the businesses themselves are seeing a doubling of their, their food prices that they're buying in. You're seeing uh, increases in utility bills and, and businesses don't have a cap. So those bills are, are quite astronomically high and going up further. And then you've got wage rate inflation. So if you put all that together, you would really need to take that £12 main course, you'd really probably need to take it to £24, £25 to cover the cost of all of those increases going through in one hit. That's just not sustainable. So the VAT cut has been Im immensely helpful to allow the industry to navigate the crises that we're facing at the moment and we need it to continue to do so. And when you say it's not sustainable, do businesses have a choice here? about putting up prices because people will just not pay, they won't come. So does that mean businesses are going to have to bear the brunt? That is the big challenge. We're still seeing really quite weak consumer confidence. People are still uh, uncertain about coming out. Customers simply won't pay that amount. You know, they have got used to being at home and they won't simply pass on that cost in full. So businesses will struggle to do that and therefore they're going to see a squeeze on margins, a squeeze on their profitability. It's going to mean that they remain fragile for about 18 months as they come out of this recovery period. Now, the government says it has provided a lot of support for the hospitality industry over the last 18 months, uh, be that the furlough scheme, be it loans and grants to businesses. That has to end at some point. Uh, is now not the time to start weaning the economy off this artificial support? Well, I think you need to avoid cliff edges, and that's what we've got at the moment in October and then again in March, when all of the support comes to an end at the same time. And actually, the government has the opportunity, now that we've exited the European Union, Brexit allows us to have multiple VAT rates. So now is the time to lock in that, mul that low rate, 12.5%, not as low as it has been, but lock in that 12.5% going forward. It'll keep prices low for British consumers. It'll make us internationally competitive as we start to get tourists back, our third largest export earner, and it'll give businesses the headroom to be able to navigate the current spate of crises we're still facing. We're not out of the woods yet. Now's the wrong time to be able to take all of that support away. Kate, good to talk to you. As always, thanks very much. Kate Nichols, our Chief Executive of UK Hospitality. Um, not out of the woods yet. So that is very much the message as far as hospitality is concerned when we talk about that VAT rise. And also, of course, one thing we'll be talking a lot about this week is the end of the furlough scheme as well, that ending at the end of the week. So business are saying, look, it's not the time to do it. We're not out of the woods. Business is not fully reopened. So taking away some of that support might be a little bit too much too soon. Uh, we'll talk more about this over the course of the week. Sure we will. Ben, thanks very much. Enjoy that breakfast. Uh, we'll <laughs> be speaking. I'm really jealous.